from Jake Lee Green from News to Share. In Santa Monica, California, Babies Lives Matter protesters square off with Antifa-looking counter-protesters dressed in black block and tell police deploy the Santa Monica Samurai Cowboy Cop Calvary, a biker guy that apparently got his gang patches straight from Hollywood, and who's that? None other than a time-traveling decoy voice straight from the year 2000 with that old-school camcorder. Now obviously that guy isn't me from the past, but I can't rule out that it's not my son from a distant AI future trying to warn us about something. That's why I'm glad I got my tinfoil beanie from decoyvoice.com just in case. But before we get into the most insane protest we've seen in a while, shout out to Jake Lee Green aka Eon Photo Co on Twitter, because this Babies Lives Matter protest at the beach got out of hand fast. He's a as counter-protesters tried to break through the police line and found out real quick. It is unfortunate that someone recovering from surgery would hit the ground like that, but the police didn't kick down the door of their recovery room. This person ran behind police lines carrying flags trying to be Mel Gibson in The Patriot, and then had the audacity to call the police fascist pigs. But luckily for them, they set up a Korean-style DMZ between the groups. But unfortunately, that did not stop a man from allegedly trying to run over a protester with his bicycle. Who was later arrested? Which makes me wonder if this guy was actually a plain-clothed copper working the protest. He's one of the only protesters wearing a mask. It looks like he's wearing a vest, and I don't know, probably something else in his waistband. Now I'm not saying it's far-fetched that the police would embed undercover officers in the protests, because I'm pretty sure even the counter-protesters were sneaking in their own members in the protest group as well. I'm just saying these protests are becoming increasingly more inorganic by the day, as we see this person grinding on the police. And I think I recognize them from the Roe v. Wade protest last year, where liberal activists blocked a freeway, and there they are, dancing. And another protest at a shopping mall, still dancing. Now I personally don't understand the connection between reproductive rights and the scene from Toy Story where Andy comes back in the room, but Santa Monica PD had to break out the steel gates to stop them. Now they must be doing something right, as it looks like they're carrying a pair of $300 Bose headphones, and are wearing a pair of Travis Scott Jordan 1s that are selling for over $1500 now. Am I really getting that old now? Because I just don't get it. How does twerking on the police accomplish anything? Because it's not just Los Angeles. They twerk on Philly police. They twerk on Chicago cop cars. And in Kansas City, they even twerk on top of cop detainment attempts. I honestly have no legitimate solution to provide, but if I were to harness all of my SAT prep powers, I'd say it's gotta be the result of decades of life without a father figure. And when they encounter a strong male presence with authority, just exuding masculine energy, they just get sent into a primal National Geographic mating ritual of just mindlessly gyrating their reproductive prowess. But before we get too sidetracked and people start wondering what's actually in these tinfoil hats, the protesters eventually began marching to the Santa Monica Pier, where they finally made it to the ocean and as night fell, they called it a day and went home. Now, I couldn't find any stories about this year's protest, but LA Times reported on last year's protest in the same area. They marched through the Santa Monica Promenade, where literal clowns showed up and small scuffles ensued. Now, I'm not going to say peacefully protesting is useless, but from last year to this year, these two groups still both exist. And the only thing that's different is they both now have video footage of the other group being aggressive towards them. Because I truly believe there's a way to sway voters that can actually enact legislative change. I believe that 90% of Americans agree that victims of horrendous crime should have safe and legal options. Simultaneously, most Americans agree that someone nine months into it shouldn't be able to change their mind, citing inconvenience. Yes, these are extreme examples, but they are things we can agree on, so we should be able to have a conversation to find reasonable points in the middle. But there's just no amount of twerking into the samurai cowboy cops that's going to get us there. So if you appreciate my concise, lighthearted commentary on what's really going on in the world, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then check out my video on how the Texas police don't have time for unemployed behavior.